You are passing through time and you are passing through time into the future. But what if I told you that depending on your speed, it is possible to travel to the future slower or faster, meaning that at some point you could be the same age as your younger sibling. Before I explain how this works, I want to make clear to you what we mean by an object having speed. When an object has speed, its speed is always relative to another object. Let's say there is a pretty fast biker going at a constant speed of 20 miles per hour relative to a tree near a sidewalk. Or we can say that the biker has a constant speed of 20 miles per hour relative to the earth because the tree and the earth are not moving relative to each other. The biker though sees the situation a little differently. He sees that he is at rest and the earth and the tree are moving 20 miles per hour because that is how he is defining the speed. It's the same situation when we are sitting in a plane or a car that is going at some high constant speed. We feel the same as if we were sitting in our chair at home because from our perspective in the plane, we are not moving, but it is the earth that is moving. So let's say our biker throws a beach ball. From his point of view, the ball has a speed of five miles per hour, but that is not the speed that someone standing still next to the tree will measure because before the biker threw the ball, the ball already had a speed of 20 miles per hour relative to the tree. So when the biker threw the ball, he added an additional five miles per hour to the ball's speed relative to the tree. So a person standing still next to the tree will measure the speed of the ball to be 25 miles per hour. The biker and the person are watching the same event in time, but because their perspectives are different, their measured speeds of the ball are also different. Now what if the biker turned on his light? Then the biker would measure the speed of light to be 671 million miles per hour. That is just the speed of light. From our previous observation, the person standing next to the tree should measure the speed of light to be 671 million miles per hour plus 20 miles per hour because the light already had an additional speed that the bike added to it. So that is what should happen, right? Well, it turns out that both the biker and the person next to the tree will measure the speed of light to be 671 million miles per hour. When our biker threw the ball, the ball had different speeds in different perspectives, but the speed of light is the same in all perspectives, in all reference frames that are traveling at a constant speed. Now that we know that light has the same speed in all reference frames that are traveling at a constant speed, imagine this situation. Imagine a spaceship that has a constant speed pretty close to the speed of light relative to the Earth. In the spaceship, there is a light clock. The light clock looks like this. There are two mirrors facing each other vertically that are one meter apart. In between the two mirrors, there is a particle of light that reflects up and down from one mirror to the other mirror. The person in the spaceship is not moving relative to the clock. He sees the particle of light reflecting up and down. So the path the particle of light travels in the perspective of the person in the spaceship is just a vertical line. Now the person looking into the spaceship from Earth sees the situation a bit differently because relative to him, the spaceship and the clock are moving at a constant speed. The person on Earth sees the particle of light reflect from one mirror to the other, but he also sees the particle of light traveling horizontally. So from the perspective of the person on Earth, the particle of light travels a diagonal path, which is a larger path than the person in the spaceship sees. Now remember, both the person in the spaceship and on Earth see the particle of light with the same speed. Speed is equal to distance divided by time. So if the person on Earth sees the particle of light travel a larger distance, he must also be experiencing the situation in a larger period of time. Mathematically, we can see it this way. If speed is equal to distance divided by time, then we can rearrange this equation to solve for the time it takes the particle of light to go from one mirror to the other. In the perspective of the person in the spaceship, the speed of the particle of light is equal to 671 million miles per hour. And the distance the particle of light travels is the vertical distance that we saw in the previous example. For the person on Earth, the speed of the particle of light is the same as for the person on the spaceship, so it is 671 million miles per hour. But the distance is different, because as we saw, the particle of light will travel a larger diagonal distance. If we divide two numbers, let's say 5 and 10, by the same number 2, we get 5 and 2.5. 
So dividing the larger number gives us a larger number. If we are dividing by the same speeds in both situations, but in the perspective of the person on Earth, the distance is larger then the time it takes the particle of light reflect from one mirror to the other must also be larger. What this means is that the person in the spaceship is experiencing time at a slower rate. We could say that the person on Earth sees the person in the spaceship in slow motion. So why don't we experience time dilation? Well, let's go back to our first example where there's a biker going 20 miles per hour relative to the tree. And let's say he has a light clock on his bike. What happens at speeds that are small compared to the speed of light, like 20 miles per hour, the path the particle of light travels in between the mirrors is vertical to both the perspectives of the person on the bike and the person next to the tree, because 20 miles per hour is so, so small compared to the speed of light. But as objects get closer and closer to the speed of light, 671 million miles per hour, like our spaceship, the path the particle of light travels in between the two mirrors becomes more and more diagonal in the perspective of the person on Earth. So as the speed of an object gets bigger, the distance that the light particle travels in the perspective of the person on Earth is also getting bigger. And if the distance the light particle travels in the perspective of the person on Earth is getting larger with the spaceship's increasing speed, then the person on Earth must be experiencing more time. In conclusion, objects that have high speeds experience time slower, or pass through time at a slower rate than objects with low speeds. Objects with low speeds experience time at a faster rate. So if different objects can experience time differently, is time travel possible? Well, it is possible to travel to the future because all of us are traveling to the future right now. But if we are traveling at high speeds through space, it is also possible to travel to the future slower than other objects. For example, if there was a person traveling in a rocket ship at 669 million miles per hour relative to the Earth for three hours, by the time he came back to Earth, eight days and 20 hours would have gone by.